Hey folks! This is a tutorial using Fusion 360 to show you how to make a simple box for the Edgelit Acrylic Project. Uh, it's going to involve a few things. We're making a box. There's going to be a slot on the top for the acrylic to fit in. It's going to be a little pouch for the battery on the bottom and a hole on the back side where we can put our switch. Uh, what this looks like in the end is something like this. Uh, you're going to be cutting out a piece of acrylic engraving your uh, decorations on the front to your heart's content. We got to make a circuit with six LEDs in a row here. And if I could be honest, I kind of prefer this project with the plywood uh, box because you can't see through the plywood. With this 3D printed part here, you can kind of see uh, what's going on inside the box. But this option is here if this is what you want to do to finish off this project. The box is basically just to hold the whole thing together. This is built to the same dimensions as the plywood box, if that's the instructions you're going by. So I'm going to start by making a new design. I might flip back and forth to this one here periodically, uh, just to get some measurements or whatever. So I'm going to start off by making a sketch. And I'm going to put this sketch looking top down at this part. So I'm going to click this plane right here. And I'm going to start with a rectangle. Instead of doing a two-point rectangle like the default, I'm going to do a center point rectangle. And this is so that I can use this, uh, the origin point as a mirror line later on. So I'm going to click in the middle, drag this over. And the first dimension in this way is going to be 54 millimeters. You should actually type these in. And I'm going to hit tab to get the second dimension, the width, which would be 96. Okay, and hit enter. And we've got our fully constrained rectangle here. Okay, so we're going to finish this sketch. And next up, I'm going to extrude this part up. And this whole thing is going to be 40 millimeters tall, so you can just type in 40 and hit enter. So there we've got the start of our box. Uh, if you get lost and you aren't sure which way is up and which way is down and all the rest of it, just remember you can hit the home button here and it will take you back to the home view, where we're kind of looking at the front and this is the top and this would be the side here. Okay. So what I'm going to do next, I don't need a solid block. Uh, what I will do is just do a quick and dirty shell on the inside. So you have to click the bottom surface here. Just make sure you're clicking on the bottom. And I want to shell this and give it a 2 millimeter edge all the way around. So now this whole box is hollow on the inside except for 2 millimeter thick walls and a top here. Okay. Uh, next up, I want to do this gap in the center. So I'm going to start by making a sketch. I'm not going to click an origin plane. I'm going to click this top surface here. So we're making the sketch on the top surface. And I'm going to do, again, a center point rectangle, not a two point rectangle. If this little dialog box doesn't pop up for you, what might be happening, you might need to hit the little arrows beside it. So clicking in the middle and dragging this over. I want this to be exactly 3.2 millimeters tall and hit tab and I want it to be 90 millimeters long. Okay, and hit enter. Uh, the acrylic sheets that we're using, they're actually three millimeters thick, but things end up a little smaller when you 3D print them, smaller than you intend them to be. So uh, this is actually a pretty tight fit the way it is here. So let's finish this sketch. And now this rectangle, we need to pop through the box. So I'm going to extrude this part here. And what you can do is you can just click and drag and like cut into infinity if you want. Now there is a more elegant way of doing this. Like maybe uh, the top is going to change or something's going to change later on. So instead of just doing a distance, I'm going to say cut this out to object. And the object where I want to cut to is the bottom side of this box. So now let's say that I, I don't know, make the top a little bit thicker. Instead of just cutting down two millimeters or cutting to infinity, which would cut through everything, uh, it's always going to stop at the, the bottom of the box here. Uh, so now what i got to do is add a few little squares for the... Uh, for the screws that are going to mount this whole thing in. So I'm going to create a sketch. And I'm going to put this sketch here on this surface. So this would be the underside of the box. 
And I'm going to draw in one two-point rectangle because we're going to mirror this later on. So I'm going to try to hit this corner point here. You'll see it should snap and there should be a little uh, square symbol here. Okay, and let's pull this over. I want this to be 17 millimeters wide by 13 millimeters tall. These dimensions aren't super crucial, but that's the way it should be like that, and it should be on that surface. Finish this sketch, and now I'm going to extrude this box, and I'm going to add to the other one. I'm going to pull this down, so I'm adding to the piece, and I'm going to extrude it 12 millimeters down. Make sure it joins to the other one. Okay, so now we've got this little box here. Uh, next up, what I want to do is I want to put a hole on this little part, this little uh, bump that we just put in. But this is a pretty crucial part to measure out because I actually need these holes to line up exactly uh, in the right place because we've already made the circuit holder. So I'm going to create a sketch. Uh, this sketch is going to be on this surface here, because I want the hole to start here. And what I'm going to do is lay out a couple of construction lines. So what a construction line is, is it's just a thing to space things out. It doesn't actually exist in fusion land, if you want to put it that way. It's just a thing that we can reference and measure off of. So the first thing that I'm going to do is measure up from the center. And so I'm going to put a line in, starting from the center point here. And this line is going to go up 11 millimeters. Uh, I might have started in the wrong place. No, I think it's right. Okay. And then from that point there, in the center, we're going to move over 32 millimeters, which should end up somewhere on this square that we've made here. Okay, hit the check mark. Uh, let's put another construction line in the other way, if you feel like it, 32 millimeters. It doesn't really matter because we're going to mirror this part anyway. Okay, so now that that point is there, what I'm going to do is finish the sketch, and I'm going to create a hole. So there's lots of different ways of just punching a hole through something. We could make a sketch and make a circle, but let's make a hole for this part here. And I want this hole to be on that point that we've made, which is the hole. Whoa. Oh, no. That's far too big. Um, so the diameter of the hole, the width of it here, is right now set to 21 millimeters. That's really not what I'm looking for. I want a 2 millimeter hole. And I don't want it to plunge through everything. Like, I don't want it to come through the top of this box. So instead of going that far, what I'm going to do is tell it to go a distance this measurement here, it's going to go a distance of 10 millimeters. Okay. So now we've got a hole, it's plunged through, it's not going all the way through, it's not popping through the top, so that's good. Let's just hit the home button just in case people are lost, go back to this view, and I'm just going to rotate around a little bit so that we can see this again. Now what I want to do, I need this on the other side as well. So I'm going to create a mirror and you got to be careful of what we're mirroring here. What we've just done, adding a hole and doing this extrusion, these are considered features in Fusion 360. If we try to mirror the body, this entire thing is one body right now, so it would it'd be mirroring on itself. It doesn't really work. We want to do the feature. The objects that we want to mirror are the hole and this little box. The mirror plane that we want to mirror things on is this origin plane here. And if everything turns out right, there we've got our other piece exactly in the right place on the other side. We don't need to do this twice. We've just used the mirror to set everything up for us. Okay, so at this point, basically, the next step that I need to do is make this little box on the back side here. And this is going to fit our 9-volt battery. So, I want this box to be on the opposite side. These screw holes here are where we're going to attach our circuit board to. And I want the battery to sit on the other side of the box to those screw holes. You see here, that's where the circuit board would go. And here is where the battery goes. So what I'm going to do is make a sketch. 
And this sketch is actually going to be on this surface here, the inside of the box opposite of the holes that we just made. I'm going to make a, this time a two point rectangle. Doesn't really matter where you start. I'll start way off here just to kind of show you what I'm going to do. And the dimension of this thing, it should be 16 millimeters tall. Hit tab and type in the other number, which would be about 56 millimeters in this direction. And then hit enter. Now this hasn't been centered. So I'm going to add a constraint here to center this box on the entire uh, big box that we're making. And I'm going to do this using what's called a midpoint constraint. It's a fairly simple one. I'm going to constrain the midpoint of this line to the midpoint of this line. And you see it goes boop. And now those two pieces, those two spots are glued together. So if I need to make this box big, bigger later, let's say that the battery doesn't fit, uh, I can always just come back and change the numbers and the position of the box will stay in the same place. So let's finish that sketch. I am going to extrude this box out. We're adding, joining to the other one here. And the dimension I have is 16 millimeters out that we're coming. And make sure that it joins to the box. Okay. Now, this is kind of a fun part. To hollow out this box here, I've made another shell, but it's actually really tough to, to see that surface there. So let's try it. I'm making a shell. I'm going to rotate around and try to hit that surface through the, the gap, that surface right there. And we're going to give this a two millimeter shell all the way around. And let's see how that turned out. It looks good from here, but I can't really see what's happening. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to make a section analysis. The plane that I want to cut on is, let's say, this top surface here. And let's bring this sliced surface down a little bit. And let's just press OK. So the section analysis is just a view of what we're looking at here. I've got my little pouch for a battery. I've got the little holes for the uh, uh, for the screw mounts. So everything looks good. Turning this section analysis back off, what you got to do is just hit the little eyeball beside it, and everything pops back into its regular old view. Okay, so we're pretty close here. Uh, the last thing that I need to do is I need to have a switch that's touching the outside of the box so that we can hit a switch without you know lifting the whole thing up and, and over. So I want the switch to be on the same side, the back side, as the battery here. doesn't really matter where you do this. It's kind of up to personal preference. I'm going to make a sketch here, but actually I, I kind of want to do it on this side so that I don't need to like look through the box again. And again, it doesn't really matter where this goes. This one's up to you. I'm doing a center point rectangle. The size of the box does really matter, though. And... Uh, it needs to be 8.8 .8 millimeters tall by exactly 4 millimeters wide. And this is going to fit the switches that we have here. If you don't like the position of this, what you can do is under modify, there is a move copy command. Let's highlight everything in this sketch and just move it wherever you like. Doesn't really matter. Okay, now finish the sketch. Uh, this needs to get plunged through to the other side. So I could just plunge it through all the way to infinity, but then I might go too far and cut through the other side, so don't do that. What you really should be doing here is, instead of going a certain distance, let's go to the object and let's go to this inside surface. And there we've got our little hole. Okay, so this is looking a lot like my first one. A couple little details to make the box actually look nice. Uh, I've added fillets everywhere. So we'll do that as the last step. And then the very last step is to add an appearance to it. Uh, I just kind of picked blue because that's the color I printed mine in. So let's do that. Let's pop back to the home view. So we're starting from the same place. Oh, I put this on the front. Oh, well. Now, let's do some fillets. Uh, let's start with fillets around these four edges here so that the whole box doesn't look so boxy. And I'm just going to eyeball these to whatever I think looks good. So let's go 5 millimeters? Sure, why not? 
Another couple things that I want to fillet. I want to get this top edge here, just so that it looks a little bit more, you know, rounded. And we're actually going to print these upside down, so this helps this edge kind of look nice at the end. So we're just going to add a very small fillet all the way around here. And let's give this, say, one millimeter. Okay, so it's just added a little bit of round to the corners here. Uh, I want to fill out a couple things on the inside too. This pouch might actually be a little bit fragile because the only thing holding it in is this one little side here. So I'm going to add fillets here and here. And I'm just eyeballing these as well. How about five millimeters? That looks good. And another part that I discovered by trial and error is as we slide the battery into this slot here, it kind of helps to have a fillet on this one edge. And let's give this a, sure, two and a half millimeter fillet. Again, that doesn't really matter. It's just going to sort of help the battery slide into place there. If you want to do a couple of more, uh, filleting these corners makes it look a little nicer. Kind of makes it look like we intended to make it like that. Okay. Um, before I make this, as you look at this corner, it's nice to have the rounded outside, but we're kind of losing some strength here if the quarter just kind of ends in a corner like that. So while we're here making fillets, let's just make a couple more. One more there. One more here. And there we go. And you can type in a number if you really feel like it. I'm going to go Five? Let's do three. Okay, that looks pretty good. It looks like those are all lined up kind of where they need to be. Okay, so the last part that I did for this whole thing was I gave it a appearance. So, uh, sorry, under modify is this little color wheel here for appearance. And it's, uh, it's a pretty simple thing. You're just basically clicking and dragging the things that you want. We're going to apply this to the entire body, not just to one face, because we're going to 3D print this. Uh, let's go into the paint, and let's take metallic blue. I'm just literally clicking and dragging and pulling it over. Yeah, we got a metallic blue finish. You want to keep trying different things. Metallic red, that looks cool. What is, what's liquid? What's calm C? Oh, no, that's, a, that's not calm at all. Uh, no, nope, I don't like that. Let's go back. Okay, so I think I'm done here. Uh, so now what I need to do, I need to save this because it's still called Untitled. So if you haven't saved it yet, you definitely should be doing this by now. Let's save this as Edgelet Acrylic Box. Uh, I'm going to call this version 9 because who knows what version I'm on. And actually saving this to send it to the 3D printer. What we're going to be doing is take Edgelet Acrylic Box 9, the component up here, right click, and if you go Save as Mesh, it will prompt you to export this in a file like an STL that we can 3D print after we sliced it on Cura. Uh, the alternative way, because Fusion changes itself all the time, uh, the old Tools uh, button is now Utilities, and the Utility button has a 3D Print button in it. And it basically brings up the exact same thing. Click on the part. Make sure that you don't send it straight to Kira so that this prompts you to save this somewhere. And we're going to call this ELA Box 9 in my 3D printing folder. And there we go. So there's the box for the Edgelet Acrylic project. Hopefully it turns out looking something like this in the end. Uh, if you want to modify this, maybe instead of a 2 millimeter thick shell, Maybe give it a 3 millimeter thick shell, and maybe the light won't shine through. That's all up to you at this point. Okay, so hope you enjoyed. See you in the next video.